Hey everyone, welcome to another The Selling Family video from hey guys. The Selling Family. <laughs> so today we're talking about something that comes up so often with new sellers and experienced sellers alike, and it's what do you do when you go sourcing and you can't find anything? That is the common question that most people post when, when they go out sourcing for their first time. They get discouraged, they get angry. And so today we just wanted to make a video to encourage you guys, give you some tips, and hopefully make it easier for you for those next couple trips out. Enjoy. All right, so today what we're talking about is what happens after you go sourcing for either the first time or even as an experienced seller, because I'm coming to this with information from our last sourcing trip. So this is what happens a lot of time in our Amazon bootcamp with new sellers, especially. Um, this question gets posed. So I'm a new seller and I'm coming to Cliff and he is an experienced seller. Hey Cliff, I looked at at least 50 things in the store the other day and nothing was able to be sold. It wasn't profitable. I'm restricted in everything. I don't know how people find anything to sell on Amazon. Well, this is again, such a common thing. And I believe that most sellers uh, have gone through this just from having our bootcamp group and seeing uh, thousands of new Amazon sellers come in. And this is probably the first thing that they post or ask because man, it is such an intimidating experience to first start out selling on Amazon. The restrictions are tough uh, and they do get easier over time. You are able to get unrestricted in new items and categories as you sell items and build your reputation selling on Amazon. So this is a common thing and most people get discouraged right away. They're, they're upset they're, and then they start to question, is this uh, even viable still today? Can I even uh, make a living selling on Amazon or how are people doing this? And they uh, are asking for tips and hints. And so that's what we wanted to talk to you guys about today and share a few things. So what would be the first thing you would say to someone? that comes with that question and is feeling discouraged that they're just not finding anything after their first trip? Well, I would say it's not just your first trip. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I, I want this video to be really encouraging so that people know it does get easier. But we also don't want you to feel like when we go sourcing that we find a bunch of stuff because it isn't the case. We don't usually go out and find 10, 15 things every single time. We're finding maybe one or two really good things when we go out and that's what we're counting on. But it can be frustrating because there are days and I, you know, I was saying it as an example, like I scan 50 things, but that's common even for us that we scan so many things and for whatever reason, either it's restricted or there's not enough profit or whatever it is, we just feel like it's not profitable. So the first big thing is just know that you're not alone and having a hard time finding products. If it was super easy, if it was just as easy as going in and every single thing that was on clearance was gonna be able to be sold for profit on Amazon, then really this business wouldn't even be viable. And just remember that a lot of times this can look super easy from seeing people posting numbers or seeing videos of people just knocking it out of the park and, and having awesome sales. And you know what? It's it's an ex a thing that comes with experience. Um, you know, a lot of times you cannot get put into a brand new job or position and be a professional at it. It's going to take some time to learn the ropes and learn how everything works. And it's the same with selling on Amazon. You have to learn how the economy on Amazon works, what sells, what doesn't, and, and how to ship things in. And you're going to make mistakes and you're going to learn from those. And the people that succeed in this business are the ones that can... Uh, take a hit, take a bump and learn and apply that to their next purchase or to growing and learning and they're the ones that become successful. So if you're discouraged and upset that you didn't find anything on your first trip, just know that it still happens to us. We go out and we don't find things uh, every now and then, but it does get easier. As experience, you'll learn what brands don't sell and what brands do sell and you'll be able to identify that quickly when you go into the store and just know that I need to stay away from that, but hey, here's something that I need to check out. Yeah. And, you know, we often encourage new sellers to focus on things that they're familiar with. That way, you know what brands are good brands, what brands are popular. If you go into a category of a store and you feel like you don't know anything about it, you're not going to know what's good and what isn't. So 
it's like the whole thing is just blind. So for me, I can go into household products and I can recognize what good brands are and I know which ones are the store brands. So I know right away, okay, I'm not gonna scan these because these are store brands. I'm not gonna scan this because it's usually found at the dollar store. I'm not gonna scan this for whatever reason, but this leaves me with these name brand, well-known and trusted brands that I can scan. And so one of the tips we wanted to give you guys uh, that are struggling to find items is uh, one of the main answers everyone always gives is scan everything in an aisle. As, as hard as that sounds um, and as frustrating as that answer may seem, that is really uh, what it's going to take to start finding profitable items at first. You're going to have to go down an aisle and you're going to have to sit there and scan item by item. Okay, and that might that may be 50 items, that may be 100, 200, 300 items, and you might only find a couple. And it's gonna be time consuming at first, but again, this is what builds that knowledge of, hey, I've scanned this brand two or three times now and it's always restricted, or uh, it's always coming up not profitable, and you just kinda of start to get a feel for, hey, I kinda of know to stay away from that, or hey, I did find this one item that was able to, I was able to sell for some profit, so I'm gonna check that next time, or in the next store I go to. You start to build a knowledge base of what sells and what doesn't. So scan everything would be one of the tips that we would give you guys. Yeah, and another one is be familiar with restricted brands. Be familiar with the categories that are restricted. You know, we really try to put a lot of emphasis on this in the Amazon Bootcamp of, hey, this is a list of brands that are restricted. This is a list of categories that we recommend you start with because if you go into a store and you're only scanning restricted products, that's gonna be really frustrating. And if you have no idea what products are even restricted to begin with, then it is gonna seem like every single thing is restricted. So for example, if you're restricted in topicals and you keep finding yourself in the health and beauty aisle, you're gonna see a lot more restrictions than if you were scanning bedding. So it's just really important that if you find that you're stuck in a, a section or a category on Amazon and everything's restricted, completely get out of that category and try something different. Because if you're restricted in a category like topicals, it's not going to vary from item to item. You're going to constantly be restricted in that. If you're restricted in selling, say, McCormick, like we just shared that item the McCormick item that we did. And a lot of people are like, well, I'm restricted in McCormick. Well, if you're restricted in McCormick, then don't bother scanning 50 different items in McCormick because they're all gonna be restricted. And so we see that in other areas too, like with Disney or with um, Disney Princess. You know, people are like, well, I keep seeing people talk about selling that, but I keep finding myself restricted. So it's good to come up with a list of things that you know you're restricted in and then just skip those. The good news is, is that after time, you can get unrestricted and stuff. So the beginning of this business is the hardest time. Right. It's where you're gonna find the least amount of stuff, you're gonna hardly be making any money per hour. And I mean, we're just being real here, right? right. We're not trying to tell you, you're gonna make thousands of dollars per hour. But the thing is, is that as you go on over time, we find like a magic spot is around six months that people find that all of a sudden they can now get unrestricted in things. They all of a sudden categories are open to them. They can get unrestricted in brands and it just makes the business a lot easier. But if you give up within the first couple of weeks, you never even get to that point. Right. And that's the hard part because I believe so many people are looking for fast income or a get rich quick thing. And this business isn't it. Uh, it is a grind. There are, uh, multiple things to learn, there's lots of knowledge to gain, and there's lots of mistakes to make. You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna buy products that don't sell, and you're gonna wonder how to do it, uh, what to do with them, or, or how to even move forward after that. But like Jessica said, it's gonna take time, uh, you know, for you to learn and adapt to how this business model works, and then it's gonna click. It does, and it's hard to say when that happens. For some people it happens quicker, and for some it happens later. Um, it just depends on a lot of different factors and you can't pinpoint each one exactly, but it is a grind and it takes time to build up an income. And that's why we always recommend people uh, to start with retail arbitrage because it doesn't take much to get started. And it's something you can do on the weekend to learn and add a few bucks to your income. And so just know that as the restrictions uh, hopefully open up for you later, there's gonna be more products for you to sell. And then you'll begin to see new uh, brands of products come to the market that you can sell. and 
uh, you know, during Q4, there's all kinds of new things that are available and, and uh, you know, that's a whole different beast, but things get opened up and you can eventually sell new products that will increase your income and make it easier for you to find stuff. So if we had to wrap it up and say what our top tips are for not getting discouraged when you first start sourcing, I would say one is know what your restrictions are. Know ahead of time, okay, these major brands I can't sell. I can't sell in these categories like topicals and ingestibles. You know, there's all these different things that I can't sell. And then don't skip around when you're scanning. Really scan each item so that you can get familiar with what's good and what's not. And then what would you say the third? Yeah, and the third thing I would say is don't give up. Um, it It's going to take some time to learn and to grow and... Uh, it's a new business for you and it's going to just take some time to learn how everything works. Amazon uh, is a real, real intricate ecosystem as far as selling and what uh, information you need to digest and learn of what tells you if something's a good product to sell or not or if it's selling. It's going to take some time and like I said, this business, people are uh, the people that are successful and doing well are the ones that can learn, adapt, make mistakes, take a punch and then keep going. It's perseverance and it's a, a, a drive that'll give you the ability to be successful in making money on Amazon. There's no magic trick or, or any type of formula that's going to be a surefire, hey, you're going to be successful. It's going to take a lot of hard work. Yep. So don't give up. Yep. So this whole thing really is just to let you know that you're not alone and we just want to encourage you to keep scanning, keep trying to find products that are profitable. And as soon as you start to find items that are good, it's just going to get the ball rolling and make it so much easier. And just know that even when you're a two, three, or four, or five, or ten year veteran selling on Amazon, like us, you're going to have days where you find nothing too. And those days will come, but hopefully you'll start to find more products soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks for hanging out. See you.